What is your career dilemma? That's the question we address each week right here on That Career Dilemma Show. Hi, I'm Paul Manson, your host, and welcome to the program. People ask me, who is the program for? Well, Courtney, the program is for people who want to sell themselves, who want to promote themselves, who may want to start or found a, a new small business, a solo venture, a solopreneur thing, a wantrepreneur, or even someone with a small business already who wants to grow it. Well, they say, how do you do that, Paul? And that's easy. It's not me. It's people like Courtney, my guests. With us today is Courtney Quinlan, the founder, president, CEO of Omaha Love right here in Omaha, Nebraska. Courtney, thanks for having me on the show and having me to your office. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Well, I'm super and just, again, pleased to be here at your lovely office and excited to hear about your your very dynamic and unusual business. So, uh, again, we uh, we talk each week to help people to uh, get going on, on making their lives a little bit better on the career front and how to promote themselves. And I think the best way to do that is talking to people like Courtney. She has uh, established this business several years ago. I'll let her tell her story. Um, but listen for what what hints and what what helpful hints that you can apply to your life as you grow in your career and your business as well. So, Courtney, that's all that front end stuff out of the way. Uh, you've had this company how long now? Going on 10 years. 10 years, a decade. Wow, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. And that's a, it's a really unique business. You're not selling tires. You're not uh, um, selling insurance. You're selling what? I'm selling love. You're selling love. I like it. <laughs> what a great slogan. Do you have a slogan? Um. That, that, that's enough right there. <laughs> <laughs> you will after this. No, who knows? Yeah, yeah. I actually probably need to get on that. <laughs> well, I think after 10 years, I think you're doing something right. So... Uh, not a not a big issue there. Um, well, tell us about your background, uh, where you're from, and, and how you ended up here in Omaha, and all these kind of things. Yeah, so born and raised in Omaha. Um, went to school in, in Miller North, and graduated, and headed out to Arizona. Arizona? To college down there? Yep, I went to How Arizona State. Pick, pick Arizona, that's a long ways away. Um, I hated the cold weather. Ah, and then you came back. And then I came back, and yeah. And there's snow on the ground in <laughs> April. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I, uh, I, I love the people here. You can't beat people in the Midwest. That's true. Absolutely right. I, I had a good friend of mine from high school um, up in Wisconsin who uh, he and his wife decided California is the place you ought to be. And they went out there and started working on their business and they couldn't stand the people. So they came back to the good old cold Midwest. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like your story as well. So you came back home. And uh, tell us what some of your first work out of college was. Um, you know, I tried a little bit of everything out of college. I, I tried selling cars. I tried um, personal training. Got my real estate license. Okay. Um, bartended. So just a lot of little odd jobs. Yeah. But I couldn't really find something that I was I was passionate about. Okay. And I stumbled into a career with a matchmaking firm. Okay. It was a national company owned by a couple gentlemen. And they were opening up an office here in Omaha. Mm -hmm. And I went for an interview, really had no clue what matchmaking was, but um, sounded really intriguing. Yeah. They hired me, and I ended up working for them for a couple of years, mm -hmm. um, did some traveling, opened up some oh. offices for oh, them. Oh, so it was not just Omaha-based? Nope, nope, okay. it was a national company. Okay. And um, really learned a lot about the industry, loved it, was passionate about it, but I just didn't really like who I was working for oh, or yeah, well. the company just wasn't exactly ethical. I understand. Well, and you know, and we'll talk a little bit about that, uh, you know, how, what differentiates you from so many of the uh, online offered opportunities out there and things like that. Um, but uh, so you learned the you learned the business, so to speak. Exactly. And uh, what uh, what what surprised you about the business when you I mean most people don't go to college and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to graduate and be a matchmaker. <laughs> <laughs> nope, there is no major in matchmaking. And it, just like for me, uh, there was no major in headhunting or recruiting. Uh, it may be sales or marketing, but I didn't take that anyway. But uh, So, yeah, I mean, what, uh, tell us about that. Um, well, I, I mean, the industry is just, it's so, there's so much to do with it. There's so many opportunities. And um, I really enjoyed the fact that I got to meet a lot of different people, a lot of different personalities from different walks of life, all looking for the same common denominator, which was to find a partner. Yeah, yeah. And well, um, who doesn't want that, right? So that's that's interesting. And, and you, you you referred to it a couple times. You said passionate. Now you discovered at that place then that that you were passionate about that business. 
this business? Yes. Okay. Yes, I really liked that, that I had the power to be able to help people find one of the most important things in life, which yeah. is a partner to share life with. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's pretty important every day to day, you know, you get by on those relationships. So uh, that's, I think, the most uh, critical to all, all, all of existence, so to speak, is to have someone to share your life with, absolutely. Um, well, that's neat. And so you didn't really like the nature of the work that they were doing necessarily, but you liked the industry and you liked the field, learned a lot about it decided to go out on your own. Is that what I'm hearing has happened next? That is what happened next. That's kind of a big jump. I mean, did you, did your family have an uh, entrepreneurial background or something like that? I mean, not everybody wants to just go out and be their own employee. Yeah, my, my father had owned a couple of businesses um, and, you know, was very successful. I, I think I came from just a background of, of salespeople and um, people that were willing to take the risk mm -hmm. to see what happened. And I was young. I didn't have a lot of uh, you know, liabilities as far sure. as children or a husband at that time, so Don't I really you? didn't have a lot to lose. Yeah, well, yeah, that's a good time to start it, right? Right. But no risk. Yeah. Well, and, and, and Courtney's right. Uh, you know, assess your life where it is at this point. Uh, so many people want to say, "Oh, I want to start my own business," but they get in and say uh, they forget that you know what is my bottom line revenue recurring going to be? Usually, those are unrealistic. People often say. Um, you know, uh, well, I'll be making X after dollars after this amount of time. Does it work that way? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, for me either. <laughs> no, no. I mean, we were we started the business in two thousand nine when the economy was oh man was awful. Who so had any extra money for love at that point? <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> you know, you, luckily we're in an industry that that there's always a need for it. People always That's want it. So. Yeah. Um, that, that has a lot to do with why I chose this company to start because it's a company that, like I said, there's always going to be a need for and a want for. Yeah, well, we'll jump ahead a little bit. Uh, I want to put in a quick word for uh, a sponsor here. Uh, on Q Marketing will help you uh, get found on a Google search. Um, check out Jeff Quant over there at onqmarketing.com and uh, he'll help you place higher in a Google, Google search. And who doesn't need that, Courtney? In this day Google's age. our best friend. We love Google. Yeah, it's, and uh, I mean, I would imagine there's a lot of people discover your business uh, via online searches, right? Oh, over half. Is that right? Really? Wow. Yes. I mean, I've, I've seen Courtney's billboards around town. You probably have as well, but half your traffic is driven from Google, huh? Yes. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting. Well, going back to the uh, early days of, uh, of, of that decision to launch, I mean, what was going through your your, your, your stomach, your gut, as they say, uh, when you first pulled, I mean, you didn't have a lot of liabilities. That's that's a good thing. You assess what your cash flow is going to be. You know, what do I need? Somehow you're able to swing it. I imagine, did you start out of your home at first or not? No, no. I, I started out, um, I had a, a private investor who was able to back me. Oh, okay. And so I started out with a partner. Okay. And, um, you know, he owned a certain percentage of the business, I owned a certain percentage, and I ended up having to pay him back for the loan with interest. Sure, yeah. Um, which was a process. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that for me, it was a better opportunity than going through a bank and, oh, and yeah. getting a loan. I mean, banks don't like unproven businesses either, so. No, and in 2009, they really didn't. Especially in 2009. So. <laughs> banks didn't like processing payroll for businesses because they weren't sure it wasn't going to be there. It was a crazy time, um, very crazy time. No, you've got a lot of guts to jump out and do it something back then, but you had a backer and you got in. You said so you had an office right away. Where was your first office? It was right here. Is that right? This beautiful building, 444 Regency Parkway, is that it? Yep. Okay. Uh, over in the Regency area, and uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, um, any scary moments um, with you in, in early on? Tell me about some of that. Cash yeah. flow is always a yeah. yeah it's always a king, <laughs> key. key. <laughs> um, you know, cash flow and and really just finding finding the right employees. Yeah. Um, I went through a lot of trials and tribulations to find a good team here, and sure. and I really didn't develop a great team until probably about three years ago with okay. um, the girls that we had. I, I had a, a rock star from about eight years ago on who's been with me, but wow. um, the, the staff we have now is the best team we've ever had. Wow, so. that's great. And how many do you have? Um, we've got three full-time matchmakers, I'm the fourth, and then we have a couple interns. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's you know... And all from well, it's ten years. That's pretty good to get a staff of five or six people going on, and you're you're keeping them all busy, right? Very busy. Well, that's exciting. There's always a market for love. That is true. <laughs> well, so going on it was it was it was um, 
fairly tough because there was the recession, but you picked a good market, a good niche, and so therefore, I mean, let's speak a little bit about that. I'm, I'm uh, John Doe, and I worked for, or Jane, let me put it in the females, in, since you're a female. <laughs> um, I'm Jane Doe, and I worked for XYZ Company for 25 years. Um, company's moving out of town, there's layoffs, or whatever, whatever. And um, I'm suddenly left, and I gotta figure out what I want to do, you know, I've got a couple kids at home, and I'm a soccer mom, and I, 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 I'm not sure I want that treadmill of that corporate cubicle and, and uh, the 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. and all that, and still working, making, as Tom Luke said last week on our show, he says, I made someone else a whole lot of money. <laughs> right. I mean, what, what advice do you have for Jane as she contemplates what her future is? How should she, how should she take stock of herself? Yeah, you know, I mean, that's a tough situation when you've got kids and a mortgage and, and a lot more responsibility than I had at that yeah, point. I mean, yeah. you have to kind of weigh out, what, what can I afford to do? Right, um, right. You can be really happy in a career, but if it's not paying the bills, then you have problems. Yeah, yeah. So, well, and I, 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 I agree with that. I, in my workshops that I, I do for uh, evaluation of your career, and whether she jump into a business or not, um, I advise that as, as people make sure that they have some kind of assured cash flow of something, whether it's working at Walmart as a greeter and you do something on the side. Mm -hmm. Because if you jump into a business and have no income all of a sudden, that's certainly going to fail, right? Right. I mean, cash is king. Right. <laughs> and, and so I see that all the time. That's good thoughts, good advice. So, yeah. Um, and um, anything else as far as, so yes, Jane should look at her, um, her cash flow, basically her needs, her financial needs. And possibly start on the side. You're thinking maybe if, if she if maybe she still has her job. I don't know. But uh, um, have you ever seen people start businesses on the side? You jumped right in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, I think it depends on the business. Um, it, with with being a business owner, you have to be able to put into it what you expect to get out of it. So if she's going to do something on the side, she's not going to be able to devote all of her time and energy into this little infant business. So will it grow as fast? Will it be as profitable as quickly? Probably not. No. Um, but it's usually slower than people think, right? Right, right. But if, if that's what she has to do in order to pay her bills is, is have another job on the side, she's right. going to have to do that. And well, it's just going to be a slower progression. I heard, I heard um, Walter Scott speak once. He's uh, Peter Cuban's son's ex-CEO, chairman, etc. And he was saying that that's what people often mistake is they know what their expenses are going to be, roughly, mm -hmm. but they don't often account for what their income is going to be. Yeah. Now, how long before you could hire your own person your, or your first staff? Um, of course, you had an investor. But... Uh, yeah, yeah. I hired one person right away to help oh, me. Did. Okay. And then, um, you know, I was able to buy out my business partner probably about five years ago. Okay, good. And, you know, really start turning a profit, a solid profit at that point. And then, yeah, so it took roughly five years to... Get on your feet. Well, so plan ahead, right? Don't just jump in and say, oh, I'm good at this world. Uh, I've seen people do that. Say, hey, I know this world. And myself, personally, I um, went into um, headhunting. Um, I was with a company for a long time. Uh, they sold, uh, moved out of town. They said, we don't need you anymore. I said, that's okay. I know I know all the, the clients. I know all the candidates. I can make all these placements on my own. Started out, and I did okay for the first couple of years, and then some... Things happen like uh, <laughs> end of Y2K and 9/11 and stuff like that. My timing was bad, but uh, the point is, um, I didn't. You know, you gotta look for the big picture and look for that flow, right? Absolutely. Well, um, anything else along the way? What, what should let's say, Jane? What, what what surprised you? I guess uh, you know, Jane's got something going. You've got something going. What surprised you along the way as far as running a business and uh, what things hadn't you really planned on that you you encountered along the way? There, there's a lot, uh, especially with customer service, there's a lot of things that, that you can run into. You can't make everybody happy. Um, in our business, we have hundreds of people with, with all different goals and expectations. And, um, you know, you can do whatever you think is best and try your hardest, but sometimes people's expectations are different. And um, <laughs> yeah. Well, especially with love, it's pretty subjective <laughs> category. It's not like I went and bought a car. You know, I, a car is going to work, it's going to drive, it's going to be okay. Um, buying a membership into a uh, um, matchmaking service is a lot more gray than that. <laughs> oh, yeah, 
yeah, I, I, I tell people that I should probably be a psychologist based on just my experience yeah, in yeah. life versus having a degree. So you hear a lot of uh, you hear a lot of uh, stories, I'm sure, <laughs> more than them. You, you bartended once. Is this at all like bartending? <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot more difficult than bartending. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> well, uh, how do you how do you handle that? I mean, there, there, you have to. Have, I mean, there's just thousands of dynamics at it. Um, you know. Because they're all bringing them their childhood images of their mom and dad or whatever are coming forward, and how do you tweak all that? How do you balance all that? Well, patience is huge. I mean, I definitely have to think on things, read the situation, read into people before I react. Um, I used to be, with age, I've changed. But as I was younger, when I would deal with situations, I would I would react too quickly. Now I take my time, assess the situation, talk with my team. I've uh-huh. got a great team here and utilize my resources. Sure. Um, I don't ever like to put too much on my plate that I can't handle, which is why I have my team to help me with, with situations that can get uh, a little heavy. Okay, well that makes sense. Uh, uh, keep the balance, use your team, and, and uh, like I said, keep, don't put too much on your plate, keep it all so you can actually handle what's, what's in front of you, right? Right. That's awesome, well that's cool. Well. Um, as you've succeeded, you've grown, you've added employees, you've added visibility in the community. Um, uh, what's the next step? I mean, how, how is it growing for you? Uh, again, speaking to Jane, the wannabe entrepreneur, yep. uh, how would you advise her as she's up and running? What, how does she, what have you learned, I guess, is the question after 10 years now, that uh, as far as what you wish you might have known five years ago? I've learned so much, I don't even know where to start. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Too much, yeah. We don't have four hours here. <laughs> we can make it. <laughs> make, a, make an infomercial or a webinar. <laughs> I mean, you, you really have to make sure before you get into a, a, a business and creating a business that you have the time, that you have the time to devote. I mean, this this business is like my third child, you know, and I have to be on call pretty much 24-7. I work seven days a week. Um, you have to be able to put in a lot and invest yourself into it. If you don't do that, you're not going to get out of it what you expect. Well, and I think you're absolutely right, both in my personal businesses and um, people I've interviewed along the other 42 episodes of the show. Um, you know, uh, Richie Poland, a few episodes ago, of Poland Custom Homes, I said, well, same, same kind of question to him. He said, well, if you go into your own business, plan on 24 seven. It's just what you just said as well. So. Um, People, you know, if they want the eight to five lifestyle or something like that, they better stick with the job, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, like I said, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. So if you want that eight to five job where you have weekends, where you have a, a nice vacation, where you can go on a vacation and not worry about email, then owning a business is not for you. <laughs> you're answering emails 2 a.m., 3 a.m., right? <laughs> I'm answering emails in the Caribbean. I'm dealing with issues in the Caribbean. <laughs> At least you can go to the Caribbean. <laughs> and, and that's the benefit of owning a business, well, absolutely. The, the, yeah. the freedom. Exactly, so. and that's what people tell me as well. So, again, with the freedom comes the burden. With the burden comes the freedom. So um, it, it's, it all washes out that way. Well, I think that's great advice for Jane and anybody else who's contemplating the launch of their own firm or, or someone who's growing their own firm. Those are great nuggets of wisdom there, Courtney. Um, tell us about Omaha Love. I mean, the online dating service, the on- non-online dating service. I mean, what differentiates you from your competition? What differentiate, yeah, differentiates you from um, from online service, I guess. T- tell us more about that. Okay, so with online service, that's what you're what you're getting is you're using an online site, a computer, where people can essentially hide behind and uh, put whatever they want on a profile, um, whatever picture they want, whatever information they want to put, and then they can chat for quite a while, potentially meet somebody, and then that person is completely surprised in who they're meeting. Um, So a lot of deception that goes on there. Uh, Time is another issue for online dating. People spend a lot of time emailing back and forth and maybe never even meet in person or they meet and just feel like they wasted a whole bunch of time chatting. And, and so your your service, you do the screening on the front end. Mm-hmm. I, I, I see your billboard, I call your phone number, I make an appointment with you. Mm-hmm. Tell us, the, walk us through the process. Right, so then you'll come in and you'll meet with me and we'll go through a number of questions where I'm able to really determine, can I help you find what you want? That's the main thing. If yeah. I can't help you, I'm not going yeah, to work with you. Yeah, if you're unrealistic, right. Yeah. Right, or, or if you're just not 
we get to talking and you know you've been divorced a year but you're really not over it I'm not comfortable sending you on dates with my clients yeah, because you're going to come point, across really point. bitter yeah. well I as a potential date of that person would appreciate that <laughs> that you're not sending me someone who's got all this baggage still and they're still mad at uh, at Joe the ex you know <laughs> yeah so. and you can help screen out for that yeah, so it's kind of twofold in, in uh, That's interesting. making yeah. sure that we're, we're taking on people who are going to be assets to us, that we're proud and comfortable introducing to who we work with. That's cool. And if they, they join a membership, is that right? Is that how it works? Yep. And then how long is a payment membership fee? Is that for a year or something like that, or how does that work? Uh, generally six months to a year. It just okay. kind of depends on the person okay. and the membership that's best for them. Sure. And then you go into your resources and meet with your staff and say, Here's a new member, and this is what I think about him, and who can we match him up with? And you, you work with all four of you doing that, right? Um, so, yeah, the first meeting is, is with me, and then after that, I assign them to a matchmaker oh, okay. who I feel they're going to best connect with. So we match them with their matchmaker as well, oh. <laughs> based on just a, <laughs> the person. And thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lots of matching going on. Lots there. of matching going <laughs> on, and, and then they meet with that matchmaker, and go through kind of a follow-up process. We take pictures, get a profile set up. Okay. Um, some clients work with me. That would be kind of like our, our platinum VIP membership. Okay. And uh, and then, you know, we essentially send them people who we feel they're going to be compatible with. Mm -hmm. They go you on dates. You arrange the dates and the places? We do and everything. Well, that's nice. Time, place. I mean, it, people are so busy these days. It's nice that they go... don't have to go out there and, like you said, waste all that time with, uh, with someone that's going to be... A, not a fit in the first place. Yeah, we uh, we just want to get them face to face because there's a lot more you can tell about somebody if you just meet them in person, sure, oh, rather yeah, than absolutely. things that can get misconstrued via email or on the phone. So we eliminate that and yeah, that's um, nice. set you up for cocktails, and then we get we get feedback, which is really beneficial yeah, and helps yeah. people too. Oh, Gordy, <laughs> loser <laughs> or great, more greats than loser, I bet, because you've done this for ten years. Mm -hmm. You're obviously doing something right. That's fantastic. Well, that's just really neat. Um, how do you measure success? Everybody's definition of success is different. So, um, you know, I may have the, the 30 year old young professional who's never been married, put his career first, comes here because he's looking for a, a really great woman to spend life with and start a family. Um, so he wants to get married. That's his definition of success. Right, right. And then I have the 55 year old divorcee, kids are growing, she's just looking for a life partner, a companion, someone to travel with. Yeah. That's her definition of success. Okay, great, great. So um, you've made how many of those marriages are, well, you can't, I mean, uh, like you say, they're not necessarily looking for a husband or a wife all the time either. So, right. Um, but you've had many marriages. We've had hundreds of marriages. Hundreds. Hundreds. Hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of marriages. marriages. That's um, great. And then yeah. several long-term relationships. Awesome. Awesome. Well, what advice do you have as we wrap up here today? Uh, uh, well, before I do that, I'm going to summarize a little bit of our conversation. Uh, Courtney jumped into the, this business uh, shortly after graduation from college. She did try a few other things. One thing that's important is that she did, she found out what she was not passionate in, right? Yep. You found out what things you didn't necessarily like and love, and then you stumbled into this business, didn't major in it in college, <laughs> and, uh, and learned the ropes, and then decided she wanted to go out on her own. Yet, she didn't go out on her own all by herself. She did have a partner who she was able to buy, buy out later. The key is she was passionate about the business and she jumped into that. So I think that's really important because so often people, you know, I mean, if they don't really love what the business is gonna be, why, why will they succeed? I mean, you have to love what you're doing, otherwise you're not gonna do it very well. Right, absolutely. Um, more wisdom from Courtney is assure that you have some cash flow going on. You had a partner and an investor, uh, I like that she's keeping balance and keeping focus on what their what their business is, and she uh, uses her staff for a springboard. She was able to hire a good staff and get that gel together after five years, maybe, and uh, and, and then she keeps things uh, balanced on her plate as well. Uh, well, the, she does work twenty four seven in a lot of situations. She still keeps a balanced plate and seems to manage uh, not being overwhelmed by things. Is that a good summary? <laughs> yeah, that's a really good summary. Okay, a little good. And uh, 10 years in the business, so she's doing something right. Courtney, tell us as we close, um, what advice would you have for singles who are looking for love? 
Well, my advice would be to bypass all of the online dating sites and come see us at Omaha Love. We make the process a lot easier. We'll save you a ton of time, a ton of energy, and do all the work for you. So if you're serious about finding love, if you're not just looking to play the field, if you feel like you're ready, it's really stable and you can make the time, then come visit us at Omaha Love, which you can visit our website at www.omahalove.com or you can give the office a call at 402-991-4053. You took my next question, which was how can we reach you, but we'll put those on the graphics on the, on the screen. Uh, 10 years of success, well, that's a, a good track record in this field, and so I would second everything Courtney says, so come on, give her a shout out if uh, you're in that situation as well. Thanks for joining us for episode number 43 of That Career Dilemma Show. I'm Paul Madsen, and this is Courtney, and we are going to say goodbye, and we'll see you next week.